Hey, welcome back. Okay, this feels a bit weird for a number of reasons. I haven't filmed for a couple of weeks because the world has been in chaos, uh, and our world particularly because our city flooded. Thankfully, we were not too badly affected, so um, very luckily our house is a little bit elevated, so we, um, we were able to avoid any actual flooding in our home, although we did have a leak in our ceiling but uh, nothing that a couple of buckets couldn't handle for the time being. So yeah, amongst all of that, I just haven't filmed anything for a while and I haven't really felt like filming, uh, but we are going away in a couple of weeks time. So I am trying to make sure that I get some stuff done so that I can maybe continue for uploading things while I'm away. The other reason this feels a little bit weird is because I'm filming in the afternoon. So you may hear noises of children because next door they have a pool that is basically just over the fence of where my wall is here. So they're all out there having a great time in the pool at the moment. So you may hear noises that you don't normally hear. The lighting is a bit weird too, but you know, we're just going with it. This is the time I had to film and so I'm doing it. Today I'm going to talk through all of the fragrances or all the things that have tempted me during this whole no buy so far. So in my February recap, I did talk about how I was quite surprised that I haven't felt any major frustration or you know, strong emotions around not being able to buy certain things. Even when my automatic brain was leading me down the path of maybe trying to buy something. But that doesn't mean that I haven't been tempted. And there have been, there have been a few moments where something has cropped up on my radar, things that I had already knew about or things that I maybe had my eye on but never got around to buying and you know, they might have cropped up somewhere and I had that moment of going, oh, if only, if only, and I was so tempted, you know, I actually had those thoughts of, yes, I'm on a no buy, but maybe I could make an exception for this one thing. And uh, that happened a couple of times. So I thought I would share those with you. Okay, so the very first thing that really tempted me in this whole no buy scenario was a bottle of perfume number 51 Pour Femme by Roger Parfums that cropped up for sale on a Facebook group. I think it might have been sometime in February and that was going for about half the price of what you would normally pay in Australia for a full bottle. I think it was a 50 ml bottle. So this was a fragrance that I have deliberately gone out of my way to avoid trying for the sole reason that I just can't afford it. So there's no point falling in love with it. And then a friend of mine uh, and I were exchanging samples and she had this in her wardrobe and she very generously sent me a sample of this one. <laughs> And I remember trying it with a lot of trepidation because I was curious about it because it had been talked about a lot and it's quite popular in the fragrance groups. But at the same time, I didn't want to fall in love with it. I didn't want to like it. And on the particular day that I sampled it the first time, I have to say, I really, really enjoyed it a lot. And it's the kind of fragrance where if you're dressed up and looking very elegant, and very put together, uh, this is the type of fragrance that would suit that scenario. And I must have been in one of those moods on that particular day. So it does smell quite elevated and refined and expensive as it should, because it is expensive. I confess it did smell, it smelled familiar to me and I couldn't quite put my finger on what it was. And so I just put it down to maybe having smelled a number of different fragrances that maybe had similar notes. And in my mind, it was kind of similar to all of them, but not exactly the same as any one of them, if that makes any sense. All I could say is that I got a lot of yellow florals, um, some really fleshy tropical type fruits, and it dried down to be soapy and a bit powdery. 
So just a really beautiful, elegant, soapy, florally, powdery fragrance, which is right up my alley, sadly. So anyway, this bottle popped up in the fragrance groups and I was so tempted because I kept saying to myself, no, you don't want it. But then I was thinking it's half the price of what I would normally pay if I had to go into a store and buy it new. And um, being a very expensive bottle, and I'm talking about the Parfum here, not the, the Cologne range that he released. But despite my temptation, I did resist it and let it go. And today I've spritzed it on the back of my hand again, actually. And I think I figured out what it sort of reminds me of. I think it reminds me of Casimir by Chopard. I used to own that fragrance and I sold it because even though I held on to it for a few years, I could never bring myself to wear it because it was so sweet. It was very syrupy. And now that I think about it, the Roger fragrance does share a lot of the notes of cashmere. Although I think the cashmere one has a lot of other spices and things going on in it. I feel like 51 Pour Femme is probably, arguably maybe a little bit more refined and um, it's definitely less sweet so it has similar elements but it's not as syrupy sweet as the cashmere so I think that's why I like it more um, and it does get very very soapy. So I feel like it has a really beautiful sillage and I think for me it actually even though I've read a lot of complaints that it doesn't last very long I actually think it lasts pretty well but it maybe doesn't project for a huge amount of time, maybe only a couple of hours, but definitely when I've sampled it, I could smell it at the end of the day on my skin still. And it, I wouldn't necessarily say it was all the way down to a skin scent, but you sort of had to be fairly close to be able to detect it. So personally on me, I think it wears very well, um, but I don't own it and I didn't buy it. Also, bear in mind that I haven't smelled Casimir for quite some time now. So there is a very good chance that my association with that one fragrance is flawed in regards to how similar it might or might not be to 51 Pour Femme. But that is the one that popped into my mind today when I was smelling it. And it did sort of bring back memories of that perfume. So that's why I've made that association. The next one that tempted me, it was a bit of an oddball actually, it was the Bulgari Tebleu. I don't know if I said that right, but I'm just going with it. This one is one that I smelled a long time ago when I was really into Bulgari fragrances and I had a few of them. And I remember always thinking, oh, one day I'll get that. I don't really remember that much about it. I remember I liked it, in which case there's probably a good chance that I've probably wouldn't love it now but I remember trying it back then and thinking that I really enjoyed it. I think I remember it being really fresh and powdery and aromatic. Maybe it was lavender? I should look up the notes and double check that but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it was a lavender fragrance. So anyway it cropped up in again one of the Facebook groups which I have been trawling through to satiate my shopping desires <laughs> but I didn't buy it. It was going quite cheap. I don't know if it's been discontinued or not. I don't think so. So possibly it'll still be available next year if I decide I still want it then. But to be honest, it's one of those things that I saw it, I had an affinity to it because I knew I'd tried it before and I knew I liked it. Um, and I hadn't bought anything for a while, so I was tempted by it. But when I, when I paused and even now thinking back on it, I think, well, I haven't missed it for all of these years that I've known about it. So I probably don't really need to buy it. Plus I already have a lot of fresh sort of powdery aromatic fragrances that I really enjoy. Or do I? I don't know. I, I think I do have a lot of fresh fragrances that I really enjoy. So I don't think I really need it. I think I just wanted it because again, I recognized it. I remembered that I liked it and 
I, I was looking, I had that feeling of wanting to buy something. The next one that I was tempted to buy, which popped up in a Facebook group, was Lipstick On by Maison Martin Margiela. Now, this one I've never actually tried, but I know it's been discontinued and I know it's really hard to get. And it had a moment a little while ago where suddenly lots of people were talking about it. I know that Eve Spider Smells has talked about this on her channel and she quite likes it. I was intrigued by it because I do love RSC fragrances and I'm also having a moment with lipsticky fragrances in particular. So I was tempted by this one because I saw it crop up. I saw it get posted when I, as I was scrolling through the, the forum and you know, I, I knew that it would get snapped up very, very quickly. So I, I, I really had a moment where I was tempted and I was trying to justify it by saying that I, this will never come up again or um, you know, it's a fairly rare opportunity. I might never get another opportunity to buy it or to even try it because again, I've never smelled it. And I ultimately stopped myself and went, no, well, you've never tried it. So maybe you wouldn't like it, or maybe it would smell similar or similar enough to half a dozen of the other iris fragrances that you already own, Cherie. So maybe you don't really need it. And so I let it go. And I'm still questioning whether that was the right thing to do, but it's done now, so not much I can do about it. Velocicos by Diptyque. This one is one that I've known about, obviously, for quite some time. It's, it's sort of always been one of those ones that I thought I'll get around to it. And then when I bought that coffret of Diptyque fragrances last year or the year before, um, Philosikos was actually in there. The Eau de Toilette version was in there. I ended up giving that away to a friend, but I sort of had it in the back of my mind when I gave it away that I would buy probably a full bottle of it eventually. And it's kind of weird because I've never been in a hurry for it before. And then of course, now that I'm on this no buy, suddenly, well now I need it. And I felt like this sense of urgency to own it now, even though there's been no urgency to own it previously. And there still is not an urgency to own it. It's not like Diptyque are discontinuing that one anytime soon, touch wood. But yeah, I just, it's so bizarre um, that suddenly I just feel like this urgency because I had given the 10 mil eau de toilette away and I'd forgotten to replace it before starting this no buy. Anyway, I don't need it. And the reason why I have always sort of put off buying Philosikos is because I have a bottle of Premier Figure by Lardizan. And I think I still prefer the Premier Figure to Philosikos. Philosikos is more of a woody fig. And I think Premier Figure is more of a green figgy fig. So I think I prefer the Lardizan one anyway. It's just that I think because I had bought a couple of Diptyque fragrances towards the end of the year, I, I bought Le Toit and I bought um, um, Fleur de Peau, and I have actually been really enjoying those. And I think suddenly I've just got this thing for Diptyque and now I want to have the Philosikos as well. But I don't need it because I do have fig fragrances. And, and also another friend sent me a 10 mil decant of Heater by Weight. I think that's how you say the brand's name. And that's another fig fragrance, which is quite interesting. I'm sort of getting to know that one. But suffice to say, I have a couple of fig fragrances that I'm very happy with and I can, I can just keep wearing those. And I also have a lot of woody fragrances as well that if I wanna make Premier Figure more woody, I can just layer it with another woody fragrance that I already own. And by doing that, I will get the same effect, even if I don't get exactly the same scent. Tuberose and Moss by Rogue Perfumery is another one that I absolutely adore. And it's one that I've had on my wish list for a long time, um, but I've always prioritized other ones from Rogue first to get those first before getting Tuberose and Moss. And I don't know why. Um, because tuberose and moss, I think, is clearly my most favourite from that brand. But for some reason, over, over the years, I've kind of 
bought other ones first. And I think it is a seasonal thing because I think the first one that I bought was Champs de Lunière and that was, I think I bought that in summertime or maybe it was spring. And, and then secondly, I bought De Viche, which I bought in the dead of winter because it's a very ambery, um, civety kind of fragrance. And uh, it's a bit of a challenging one too, but there was something about it that I just, I think I enjoyed the challenge of wearing it. And so I bought that one. And probably also because Matt likes that one too. And so I figured I prioritized buying that over tuberose and moss because I wanted to get something that we maybe both could enjoy rather than just buying stuff that I would want to wear all the time. So uh, hence I didn't buy tuberose and moss. So tuberose and moss is just a gorgeous, clean, mossy tuberose that has a wonderful freshness to it. And I really, really do love it. I have a sample of it that um, my friend Petra sent to me. I've had samples of it previously as well. Um, so I, you know, I've been through a few samples of it and I do enjoy it, but I'll just continue to enjoy samples of it until I can actually get my hands on a bottle next year. And finally, in the perfume section of the list, we have Arnie by Nishane. Now, this is one that, again, I kind of didn't want to like, and it wasn't because it's out of my price range, but it's more because it was hyped so much that I had a mental aversion to wanting to like it because I'm a snob when it comes to things like that. And then when I did eventually try it, I think last year, I, I told myself that I wasn't particularly impressed by it. I thought it was a fairly basic vanilla and I thought it was very nice, but I just sort of thought, mm, no, you know, it's not that exciting to me. And then I smelled it on my friend Emma and it smelled like a completely different perfume. And I went, wow, that's amazing. And then I got sent another sample of it in some bundle of samples that I got in an exchange. And I started wearing it again, but I wore it in summertime this time, not winter. And suddenly I started to pick up some of those other elements. I always just assumed that the vanilla was always being amped up on my skin and drowning out all that beautiful spiciness that it has in it, um, particularly that ginger, because I just love a good ginger note. And yeah, so I, anyway, I tried this over summer, just before Christmas, and I was thinking, yeah, this is good. I'm actually really enjoying it. There is also the, the fact that over the last 12 months or so, my aversion to vanilla fragrances has started to have a bit of a turnaround. So there could be that playing into it as well. Like, so perhaps it is still quite vanilla-y on me, but I don't mind it so much anymore. However, I still have a sample of it and I also have an 8ml decant of it because my January Unique U subscription was Ani. So I actually have enough to get me through the entire year probably. And it'll be interesting to see if at the end of the year I'm still as enamored with it as I am now. Perhaps by the time I've gotten through the 8mls, I may well decide that I don't want it anymore anyway. The other one that I've been really curious to try, I wasn't, I won't say that I was necessarily tempted to buy it, but this is the one that I referred to, I think in my February recap, where I said that I was driving home from the gym and I was thinking about this particular fragrance that was being talked about on social media. And there was a bit of a buzz about it. And I, my immediate thought was that I was going to just get a sample of it. And then I realized I wasn't allowed to buy samples anymore. The fragrance that I was thinking of was Ruby and Vanilla Neroli by EBK Parfums. I have got a mini bottle of their Ruby and Vanilla, which was gifted to me by a friend. And I do quite like that. That is another sort of spicy vanilla, I think. Um, it's been a while since I've worn it. I did remember thinking that it was quite a unique fragrance for a vanilla fragrance. And um, I, maybe it had red fruits in it. Anyway, I can't remember. I'll have to pull it out and um, have another play with it. I still have some left and maybe I should, you know, make that one of my ones that I want to use up this year. But uh, they released a new one this year uh, called Ruby and Vanilla Neroli. And that uh, apparently 
well, obviously it has neroli in it, so it's a little bit more green. It's a little bit more um, summery, springtimey, floral element to it. And I figured, given how much I love neroli and I love orange blossom, that I would probably really, really love it. I was tempted by it, but I will wait. It is a new one for them, so I'm guessing they will still have it next year if I feel so inclined to try it. We're good. Fregea. 1833, I don't know if I've said that right, is a brand that has recently hit Australian shores. Now, when I went to Japan in the beginning of 2020, one of my friends on Facebook said to me, you have to try this brand when you're in Japan because they, the, they have a, a perfumery there. She said it's one of her favorite fragrances and, and she would always post about it on her Instagram page. Um, she, haven't, she hasn't been very active lately, but uh, suffice to say, it is a brand that's been on my radar for quite some time. When we were in Japan, unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to get to the perfumery, so I didn't get to try it. So when I noticed recently that it had popped up in stock in one of the local perfumeries, I was really excited. I haven't actually been into the store yet, so hopefully I will still get to try them, but I won't be able to buy samples. But but my first inclination when I read the email that they were now stocking this brand was to immediately purchase a discovery set. Uh, but I can't do that. So I have to actually wait until I've got time to actually go into the store and try them. And then finally, the last thing I was tempted to buy was uh, another white Christmas candle, which is my favorite Christmas candle. I noticed in early Feb they still had some available on the website and I know that they only come out at Christmas time so I was tempted to buy another one of those because I think in February I finished the last white Christmas candle I had in my backups but can't buy it. So I'm just going to have to wait till next year and that really is okay because I do have a lot of scented candles that I need to get through this year. So I really just cannot justify buying any more. So they are the things that tempted me the most in the first six weeks of my no buy year. And I'm pretty proud of myself actually, especially with a couple of those that I stuck to my guns and I didn't give myself an out or I didn't give myself an excuse to justify buying something and I think you know exercising that muscle really makes it a lot easier as time goes on to say no to things and eventually I'm hoping I'll just get out of the habit of scrolling these Facebook groups anyway and maybe I won't end up being so tempted but it's okay because I resisted the temptation and that is really what this is all about and this is why I didn't unsubscribe from mailing lists because I wanted to have that feeling of seeing something and wanting it and then telling myself I don't need to have it and don't buy it. And I think it's working. So I'm going to leave it there. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if there's anything you've been really tempted by uh, this year. Even if you're not on a no buy or a low buy, but you saw something that you would just tempted to get and what stopped you from getting it. Anyway, if you liked this, please do give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Bye.